Hello, this tutorial will explain how Photo VCarve can be used to convert digital photographs into permanent engravings. We're going to load an image file, a GIF file that's been taken from a digital camera and edited using a paint package such as Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Paint, PaintShop Pro or Corel Draw, etc. You'll see that we've painted around the outer edge or the border of the face with a solid color yellow. We're going to use this to limit the engraving boundary so that the engraving cutter only machines inside the boundary or the face area. So to do this we're going to make the yellow area transparent. So click on transparent, click on the yellow and the yellow disappears, becomes transparent. Next we're going to set the size that we wish to engrave the job. Let's say we wish to engrave this 2.5 inches high. You'll see that the width is automatically scaled to keep the correct proportions for the photograph. The origin is the bottom left hand corner of the picture and this will be set on the machine at X0, Y0. We're going to set the cutter off the surface of the material and the material is point one of an inch thick. Click the apply button and the set cutting parameters form becomes available. Click on set cutting parameters. In here we select the tool that we wish to use to engrave. So let's say we're going to use a 60 degree included angle cutter. On the right hand side we specify the angle for the tool, the pass depth for the tool, the spindle speed and the feed rates. Click OK. Next we specify the depth that we wish to engrave this picture. Let's say we wish to engrave it 20 thousandths of an inch deep. You'll see here that we have a slider. As we increase the line spacing, the number of lines reduces. So this means the amount of detail that we engrave will be re reduced because the resolution becomes less. If we reduce the line spacing we get more lines in the picture so we get a high defi definition result. We're also going to engrave at an angle across the image of 22 and a half degrees. Click the calculate button. The toolpath is automatically calculated and the preview of the toolpath shown in the three-dimensional view. We can rotate the three-dimensional view by clicking and holding the left mouse button. We can zoom in by clicking and holding and pushing the right mouse button. You can see here these are the lines that will be engraved across the photograph to produce the end result. If we click on view toggle preview You'll see there that we can look at the toolpath on its own and it's just cutting inside the boundary of the face. So saving time when we run it on the engraving machine. If you toggle back to the solid preview, we can increase the definition or the amount of detail in the engraving by reducing the depth that we cut to. So if we say we only cut 15 thousandths deep, we now have 144 passes. This will take longer to cut but will be more defined. So if we recalculate, we'll see now that we have a, a very good likeness from the picture being engraved into the material. We can increase the contrast in the picture. If you have a picture that's washed out or not, too, not very much contrast between the black or dark areas and the white areas, we move the slider, say 20% contrast, and recalculate You'll see now that the dark areas get darker, the light areas get darker. When you're happy with the, the quality or the, the preview of the engraving, we then say save the toolpath and preview it. So we can look at the, the toolpath or the preview in different materials. So we could look at this into a piece of slate. You can change the colour fill if you wish. The software has also estimated the approximate machining time. Because this is very small, with the feed rates that we specified, 
it should only cut, take three or four minutes to cut. Then you select the post processor that you wish to run your, for your machine. Let's say for example we're running G-code in inches. Save the toolpath, give the toolpath a name and save the file to disk. This is now ready for sending to your CNC machine. You can save the file if you wish, so file save. This allows us to permanently save the file to disk so it can be reopened at a later date if necessary. Thank you for listening to the tutorial and hope you enjoyed it.